Hello and welcome back to the little Welsh cottage here at the head of the Ronda Vauru in South Wales. As you can see, I'm making my breakfast. I'm finding that wake up early, get on the computer, try and get your work done as much as possible and then have breakfast a few hours later. Now, I've been having to think about the little tasks that need doing around the house. And I've been thinking about this window here and how to make it look a bit more attractive to look out on. So I've got something that should turn up in the post later today to go out there. But I've also been having a think about under the stairs. So I think I'm going to tackle that today and possibly try and turn it into a pantry, but using some items that I've already got. Now according to the weather forecast, the rain is going to stop by 11 o'clock and then the sun's coming out and they say, I don't believe them, that the temperature will suddenly go up to 21 degrees. So I'm doing some washing in anticipation. It's a very dark day, I must say. Right. I'm going to enjoy this by the side of my coal fire. <laughs> This is some of the sauce from the newt in Somerset. And it's okay. I just think it's a bit too much on the tomato side for me, but I've got it, so I'm going to use it. Well, I can't see this rain stopping or this sunshine coming, to be honest. So I might have to end up putting them over the bath. Right, here we go. The mammoth task begins. Now, the first task is to get everything out. Now, the disadvantage of what I'm doing is I'm actually going to end up losing space. Because if I put a set of shelves there, I'm going to lose all that space at the back. But there's no way around it. Even if I make smaller shelves, I'm still going to lose some space. And where will the bike go? I don't know. Maybe I will make, not today, but maybe I'll make some form of shelter in the garden. The first task is to get everything out and then get ready to put it all back in later, but hopefully then tidier. Ah, that's good because I was wondering whether I had any cat litter in the house. I do. This is one of those tasks that once you start you got to finish it. Oh, I must say, my supply of toilet roll is going down. Must make sure I have some on order. Some of this can actually go down to the shed, especially when the new one is built. get some hooks to put this on the wall. That will take up a little less space. And stay there. So I'll come and take a look. Look how clear that is. Wonderful. Now the shelves up here, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep, I'm hoping I'll be able to keep these. Right, let me go and get my idea. Now I'm thinking of going through my books and getting rid of quite a few of them. So therefore, this bookcase 
is no longer needed as a bookcase. And if my calculations are correct, this will just about fit inside. Might be a tight squeeze, but it might just about fit. Don't just stand there. Come and give me a hand. Now, I think I can do this without taking the hooks off. Like I said, I'm losing all that space behind, but you know, what's more important? Right, I'm gonna have to take one of them off, I think. Hold on, no, hold on. Stand by your beds. Right, just have to make sure the cats don't come in because they'll slide down the back and they'll be hiding down there. Now, I have thought about putting it on this wall up here. But I think I lose. Well, I do like the fact that I can come in here. And my courts are up there. So I think, for the time being, I think it is in the right place. And in fact, to stop it from wiggling, I could screw that into the stairs. Right, let me step back and have a think. Because if it goes here, then it's going to come out a certain distance and then I'm going to have to squeeze in and out. If I put it against that wall, it'll come out to about there and it may work there. I can still access the shelves on this side though. But is that an enough space? At least by putting it here, I could utilize the space a bit more down on the left. Hold on. Now I look at it, I think I, it might be in the best place. He said, because it's difficult to get back out again now. resistant to move. It's saying, leave me here, leave me here. It is, I can't get the thing out now. Maybe that's a sign. Because if it comes out to here, then I'm going to have to squeeze in. No, I think I'm going to leave it here. It's resisting the temptation to come out of where it is. So we'll take that as a sign. What's your sign? So let me put the door back on, get that fixed forthwith. And now we can start filling the shelves up. So there we go, they're going to stay there. I did have a plan at one point, because obviously when the, the, the washing machine's on, so it's a bit noisy, but when the washing machine's off, I thought it's quite a nice place to come and do a bit of recording for the voiceovers. To begin at the beginning. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose I like it. I like it a lot. Another idea was I was going to turn it into a little book space. I just quite like the fact that it's 
nice and cosy. It'll be a nice place to come for a cup of tea. So I'm still keeping this, but this is going to be more of a storage unit where I've got too many tea banks, so they can go in there. So the next thing is to sort out these books. Because how many gardening books do you need when you've been gardening yourself for 40 years? And then this is for the daily use of, you know. Put my jars on my pulses and things. And it's got an automatic light at the top, which I think that one is battery operated or it could be by USB. And then on the side, my little tools and things. See these old shelves, they have a bit of character to them. And then this, this is the little secret compartment here, which I discovered doesn't go anywhere. In fact, one of these is quite loose and it just goes up to a dust filled room full of the water pipes and wires. But look at this, the old the whittle and daub. You can even see some of the original bricks and the timber. And one of the neighbours told me these came from the local colliery and this guy who lived here years ago, his number was 137 in the coal boat. So when he used to go to work, he used to pack his clothes onto there, 137. But it reminds me of the houses you used to go to visit as kids with, with school, the little, the Tudor houses. I don't know what I want about, so don't bother to listen to me. It's like having my little own wine cellar, but for still water, Icelandic water, straight from the icebergs of this. Oh, I must say it gets quite warm in here after a while. There you go. Look how beautiful that is. After doing that bit of work in the house, under the stairs, I had to pop out. So I haven't finished yet, so I need to go back and do that. But it's a new day. And I'm turned up at the old homestead for a cup of tea. As you can see, the river's mighty high today. It hasn't stopped raining for days. But there's been a few developments, and I thought I'd bring you up to speed. So you know the debacle with garden buildings, direct or non-direct, as they should be called. It was due last Friday, didn't turn up. So I sent them an email on the weekend and I said, forget about it, I'm cancelling my order. Not only this order, but the order for my greenhouse. Give me my money back, let's part waves and never see each other again. Monday, I then get a t uh, phone call to say, your shed is an hour away. And I said to the driver, I'm not going to accept it. And I told him the debacle. And he said, to be honest, mate, you're not the first and you're not going to be the last. I delivered a shed the other week that it was two months late. So I sent them a tweet on Monday saying, give me the money back and I'll tweet you every day until I get the money back. There was a time in this country when a date promised was a date honoured. And then they blocked me on Twitter, a company who has followed me for 15 years. And I've been thinking to myself, because I've dealt with this company for about 12 years in the past, there's been about a six year delay in our interactions. And I thought something's happened. And I said to her on the phone, when, she, when somebody from the office phoned me last week, which I recorded the phone conversation, just to be, just to be sure to be sure. And I said, have you changed hands? And she went, no, nothing's changed. So, Tuesday, 
and there's no communication. So I decided another tactic. So I went onto LinkedIn and I added every member of staff on LinkedIn. Didn't matter if they were just in logistics or whatever, I added every single person. But what I noticed when I was looking at their LinkedIn page, they only seem to have a handful of staff in the UK and the rest of the staff seem to be based in the Philippines. So I thought, is that the issue? A different level of service, maybe. So Tuesday, I then got a generic email saying, we will pay you back the money and let's forget about it all. And then Wednesday morning, I sent them another email saying, thanks for your correspondence. Please, can you give me a date? Don't say it'll be sorted out soon. I want dates. I, I, I want a firm date to go into my diary. And they didn't respond. But then the next day, which is today, the money appeared. Not only the money for the shed, but the money for the greenhouse as well. So it's, it was nearly a thousand pound. So I've had all the money back and I will never deal with them again. And I'll do a little article on my blog, I think, explaining my issues. Because this doesn't feel like it's the first time that it's happened. And for the fact that there was no, no communication and they blocked their Twitter page, just says they're not interested. They're not bothered. And I would imagine a lot of people don't bother to complain. And what I was frustrated by was the fact that they had a golden opportunity to work with me in trying to solve out, solve what the problem was. Because there was obviously an issue with their computer system. Because even up until the day that it was in the van and it was due to arrive at the homestead, I had an email that day going, it will turn up on the 21st. So there's obviously an issue. And they should have taken the opportunity to have said, right, Let's work with you and try and resolve it. But they weren't interested whatsoever. So I posted this on my social media pages. And adding them all up, there's about 150,000 people there. And somebody contacted me and said, why didn't you go to Trustpilot, is it? Why didn't you go to Trustpilot first? And I said, because I've dealt with this company loads of times on various different projects so i took that as the recommendation but a six-year gap of the last interaction is was obviously a, a, a bit too much but somebody then said to me why don't you go to this company called and i'll find out the name for you because i've had excellent service and i think people should be told called garden street gardenstreet.co.uk that is the website there so I looked through this website and I thought right seeing as I'm starting from scratch maybe I'll start from scratch with my own thoughts so what I was buying before was just a shed to house all the equipment for the 24-7 feed that I want to do But I thought, how about a summer house? Because as much as I like this shed, it's a working shed. It gets a bit dirty. And sometimes I like to come down to, to a garden and just sit there and enjoy the peace and quiet, watch the flowers and everything. So I thought, I wonder how much a summer house is. They're probably far too expensive. But I saw this one. And I absolutely love the colours. It sort of, it plays into my 1940s feel, I think. Look at the colours on there. And here's another picture of when you open the by folding doors. So I thought, I like that. And I'm going to put an order in. So I did. I put an order in. 
and I phoned them up the next day because I did that on the Sunday. I phoned them up. I explained the issues that I've had with this other company. So I said, I'm going to be a bit on edge now with you. And I want to know dates. I want a date for the diary. When's it going to turn up? And if you change it, one that I order, the money's going back into my account and we're, call, we're going to call it quits. And they sent an email. Look at that there. Look, that's the inside. That's an idea of how you could do the inside of it. So they sent me an email. And they said it would turn up on Monday. The following Monday. And then they gave me a phone call. And they said, we've just realised our driver will be in your area on the 17th. Would you be interested in having it early? So I said, yes. And then they've sent me an email which gives clear indication of what time it was going to turn up, how many deliveries were in front of me. And then today I've been looking at this and it's gone. You, you are the next delivery. And then half an hour before, the guy phoned me and said, just let you know, we'll be coming around your corner in about half an hour. And they turned up on time and they gave me a hand and they've brought the summer house onto the land so i have the summer house it's in a bit too many bits than i thought i thought it was just going to be four panels you could put together and apparently i have to put the pieces of panes of glass in myself as well but that's fine so i'm really impressed by this company so i was looking on their website at what else they had because now i need to find a greenhouse i haven't you know I've cancelled this greenhouse and I saw this the greenhouse I had in London in one of my plots was a beautiful greenhouse but I couldn't afford that now it was very expensive so I was looking through this website and there's a sale on and I've seen a version of this greenhouse and that's a picture of it there look at that and again I think that blends in with the with the summer house so i've ordered this as well so that will turn up in about a week as well so that gave me an opportunity to go back to the drawing board and think about the layout of the old home homestead and what i will do is i will put the picture up on screen now and you can see my way of thinking so there's the, the pot and shed which i'm sat in now next to that is a greenhouse the only issue with this greenhouse that, that i don't like is the one i had in london you opened the door and you walked in and the door went into the building this one the door comes out of which i think is a bit of a bit of a flaw because if you've worked out your floor plan then you know you're going to be okay. But now I'm going to have to add in an extra few feet for the door to be opened. But anyway, next door to that is going to be a pond with a bench. Then two large vegetable beds. And where the summer house is going, the flower beds on each side of the summer house will be the depth of what the depth of the summer house is. So they'll be really large beds. And I think that will be will be grand because you're coming through the gate you'll see these two large beds a summer house i'm not going to fill the inside of it there might be a little cane uh sofa a good excuse to go back down to too good to waste and have a look at what they've got but i'm not going to spend a fortune i'll just something to have a little sleep on of an afternoon and somewhere to make tea and then this shed here can be turned into a conventional potting shed with my composts and you can get a bit dirty in the shed but down in the summer house it'll all be about relaxing and entertaining so it, it's been a busy week it's been a nice relaxed week but it's been moments of being quite full-on but i feel in a much better place this week than i did a week ago obviously a lot of people have said to me garden buildings direct could have should have given me some compensation for the stress but as long as i've got the money back i'm happy let's move on and never 
hear their name ever again. So, they've lost out on some custom though, because quite a few people on my Facebook page said they were waiting to see how I got on with my shed, and they were going to put some orders in, because somebody was after a shed, there's, there was a greenhouse. I think about six people were after sheds, and three people were after greenhouses. They've lost all that money now. But who cares? I don't. All I care about now is a cup of tea. So this is what I've bought. A thermometer. But a large one, so I can see it from the kitchen. And my plan is, as soon as I find them online, I'm going to get two large terracotta troughs so I can put there. And I can look at my flowers then from the kitchen window. But that's very handy to have a look at that in the morning, see how cold it is, and decide whether I'm staying in or not. Right, so let me give you an update on how it's looking in here. There we go. Got some, got the water in there. Cat food, a few little vegetables, the eggs. Now I don't have to cram them into the chicken. And a few little dishes at the bottom, along with even more things on the floor, such as the cat food, uh, potatoes, and toilet roll. So I'm quite impressed with how it's all turned out in the end. And then over here, I'll just get a few little boxes so I can put all my tools in and that everything is a bit more organized. Well, thanks for joining me. I've had a nice time off over the last few days, but it's good to be back. I just hope that we get the nice weather now so I can get that shed up and running. Right, I'm gonna have a cup of tea and have a rest. Catch up with you next time. So from me until then, bye for now.